Tonight, investigators think a fire that destroyed a home in Mercer County may have been sparked by lightning. The fire started in the Salvisa community early this morning as a storm moved through. Phil Pendleton talked to a neighbor. It wasn't an alarm clock that woke up many in Mercer County this morning. It was just a big roam of thunder. I didn't hear no lightning, but I just heard the thunder. But did a lightning strike start the fire that destroyed this house? I didn't see no pop. I just seen the lightning, lighten it up. The home on Hopewell Road in the Bohan community is now a total loss. Neighbors say a man lived here alone with his dog. The man was not home. They really? feared the dog didn't make it out, area but was later neighbors. found okay. I guess it's just like a kid. Cause you bring him out every day and chain him up and hook him and. Uh, Feed him, love on him. Firefighters from five different departments responded. I feel sorry for him. His house burning up like that. They're trying to salvage some pictures and things over. Not a whole lot left to salvage, I imagine. Storm also knocked down tree limbs all over the county and left some high water, but no other major structural damage. In Mercer County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Mercer County emergency managers also tell us the storm knocked out power to many Bluegrass Energy customers, but service has since been restored. Another round of strong and severe thunderstorms marching into central and eastern Kentucky. We'll put a track on the storms with a live first alert defender coming up. This is the end of our trailer, half of it. The other half, we don't know what happened to. Homes wiped away during deadly flash flooding in Johnson County. We're live with team coverage. Many people in Rowan County are cleaning up tonight after flash flooding damaged or destroyed dozens of homes. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Entire communities devastated. This video from Sky First showing what's left after a flash flood in Johnson County. Two people have died. We now know their names and others are missing. Many homes have been damaged or destroyed. Good evening. We'll have live team coverage from Johnson County in just a minute. But first, we're tracking another round of strong and severe storms moving across the area. We begin with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey on this WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Chris? Yeah, guys, absolutely incredible pattern. We know that. Severe thunderstorm watch until midnight. Much of central and eastern Kentucky, same areas, also under a flood, uh, flash flood watch through the overnight. Let's get into Defender now. Severe thunderstorms are taking aim at the hard hit areas of Fleming County, Rowan County, and now Johnson County. Severe thunderstorm warning is out until 7 o'clock this evening for Bath, Elliott, Johnson, McGoffin, Morgan, and Rowan counties. National Weather Service in Jackson getting well out ahead of this line of thunderstorms that is still up around Interstate 64 that will work its way quickly toward the south. So again, for the cleanup, the search and rescue efforts that are ongoing into Johnson County, those are going to have to be suspended again because of severe thunderstorms and the potential for more flash flooding. To the north, severe thunderstorm warning for Fleming, Menifee, Montgomery, Morgan, Powell, Bath counties. That uh, is also with a severe thunderstorm warning on the northern flank of that for about 15 more minutes. Bath, Elliott, Fleming, Morgan, and Rowan. It, you're seeing some of the same counties. We're talking about different parts of those counties for the different warnings. Severe thunderstorms rumbling across northeastern Kentucky. Let's get into the areas that have been ravaged by flooding over the past couple of days. Parts of Fleming County, now into Rowan County. Flemingsburg, worst of it is just off to our southeast, right on top of the Fleming and the Rowan County line. And look what is on top of Interstate 64. Somewhere under here is the interstate. Uh, heavy rain potentially causing some flooding issues as it works its way into Moorhead. And more specifically, the Hayes Crossing area here in the northeastern parts of Rowan County. This is where we had devastating flooding yesterday. Really surprised we don't have a flash flood warning out for this storm that is moving over the same hard hit areas. I see the National Weather Service in Charleston has put out a flash flood warning for Carter County. Everybody out ahead of that line of thunderstorms in the eastern Kentucky needs a flash flood warning. Just to give a heads up because it's likely to produce some more flash flooding. You've got some thunder and lightning here ongoing. Carlisle back into sections of Bourbon County. We put everything into motion. Guys, look at eastern Kentucky. Look at all the lightning. It is increasing. That flash flood threat is going to really increase again for areas that have been devastated. Moorhead area, Rowan County, down into Morgan, McGoffin, and especially 
parts of Johnson County. Guys, the Flat Gap area, about one hour from now, torrential rain producing thunderstorms with a lot of lightning and damaging winds are due into that area. Chris, the timing couldn't be worse. Tonight, search and rescue crews are still trying to find those unaccounted for in Johnson County. And the water pushed homes right off their foundations in the Flat Gap, Redbush, and Staffordsville communities. A massive recovery effort is also underway. Amber Philpot joins us live from Johnson County to begin our team coverage tonight. Amber. Sam, Jennifer, the video is just heartbreaking. It is gut wrenching from these communities to know that just yesterday morning, many of these folks had a home, and then in an instant, it is simply gone. We've learned some new information here late this afternoon. We now know the names of two people killed in this flash flooding. Herbert Eddie May was the man found yesterday, and then today, 74 year old Willa May Pennington was found in the Flat Gap area. Those uh, names coming from the Johnson County corner. There is a lot to get to. So let's start out now and get to this by the numbers. Let's take a look at the numbers. State police now confirm two people have been killed, an adult male and a 74-year-old woman. Six people are still unaccounted for. Right now, it is still considered a rescue mission. But the longer it goes, first responders say hope is fading. Emergency crews performed 50 water rescues in the last 24 hours, most of them last night. At least 60 homes have been destroyed by the flooding, but hundreds more have been damaged. Well, emergency crews are keeping people out of those hardest hit areas. I'm joined now by WKYT's Mike Linden, and you got to see this devastation firsthand this morning. And I know it had a little bit of an impact on you. I mean, when we were driving up to it, you would see mud on the ground, and then it began to really open up and simply, it, it was unlike anything I've really ever seen before. And the people that I spoke to, well, they, they simply lost everything. That would be. Uh... My bathroom and bedroom. James Martin says of the 12 years he's lived at the Pennington Mobile Home Park along Highway 172 near Flat Gap, he's never experienced flash flooding before. I've lived right here and about a mile down the road. I'm 41 years old, 41 years, and I've never seen that Craig Havage Banks right there. Martin says he only had a few minutes to get out of his home. Before the unimaginable happened, my mom's trailer, my sister's trailer, and it all went down to her. I mean, it's just all disappeared at once. Johnson County emergency management officials say more than 150 homes were destroyed countywide, more than 60 of which were near the Flat Gap community. Martin says he's still trying to process what happened. That's unreal. Yeah, it's it's it's. I don't know. It's. It's not settled, I'd be honest with you. Now all that's left to do is pick up the pieces of what's left. But Martin says he has a new outlook on life. Last night I come to the conclusion that even though I lost everything I had, that my mom, my sister, my niece, and me, myself, we all, we all got out of there alive. You know, that's, that's the best I can say about it. You met a lot of people, and family is certainly important here. That's for sure you can tell. I spoke to quite a few people that lived in the mobile home park there, but then I would try to speak to somebody else and say, oh, I'm his mom, I'm his brother, son, nephew. Just a big, big family community effort, people coming together uh, in the time where they really need it most. It was just amazing to see firsthand. I'll never forget it. Mike Linden, thank you for bringing those images from yes. on the ground today. We were also able to receive a look at the devastating damage from up in the air today. Sean Moody was able to fly over Johnson County in Sky First, and he gives us this look. When you're flying in the helicopter over Johnson County, it's not necessarily obvious where the damage is going to be. You have to be right on top of it before you see it, but that's where you'll see the debris along the water's edge, and as I'll show you, homes thrown right up against each other. Things look okay here in downtown Paintsville as you take off. Set a course to the northeast and you'll hit Mudlick Creek along Highway 172. From there, it doesn't take long before you start seeing damage. There's debris all through the field behind Ramey Branch Gospel Church. One of the things that's been giving first responders trouble is a lack of communication. The flood took out a lot of the landline telephone poles. Hung up there in the trees, you can see debris that's been pushed from further upstream. Then you hit what used to be a mobile home park. There are, you can see there, are five major maybe six mobile homes just smashed up together along the edge of the water. You can see people gathered around that home there, and if you look close, you can see a car mixed into the middle of the remains of that home. There are more cars not far away stuck there in the mud. 
The county emergency management director says just along Highway 172 alone, there were 60 homes destroyed. Now, of course, right now, the emergency director said their main focus is search and rescue, trying to find and help people. After that, they'll document the damage. He said he estimates by the time this is all said and done, there could be as many as 150 homes destroyed. Over Johnson County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Well, it is quite a view and a perspective when you see it from up there in the air. Here inside Johnson Central High School, where I am, people are still dropping off donations. We've seen a lot of people come by and pick up those much needed supplies that people are trying to help them with. We're going to stay here throughout the night and bring you much more. I can tell you, hearing from Chris Bailey that more rain is on the way to this area is certainly not good news for the folks that are dealing with so very much from this flash flooding. That is the story here in Johnson County. Amber Philpot, WK. YT. Amber, thank you. And as someone who has covered a lot of disasters, these pictures are bad, but in person, it's even worse. And right. that's, that's hard to believe because the pictures are bad enough as it is. Your heart just goes out to all of these people who are dealing with this firsthand. Yeah. Johnson County, not the only area. It's just what Rowan County doesn't need. Severe storms moving through right now. Emergency managers say there that dozens of homes were damaged or destroyed in last night's flooding. Most of the flooding was along Highway 60 east of Moorhead. Sam Smith talked to a woman whose home was flooded. Mildred Parker was trapped inside her home while it was surrounded by water. It was everywhere. It was all around. I couldn't see anything but water. The creek near her home turned into a river. And I was very scared, and it seemed to go on for, it felt like two hours. I mean, the water, it was just horrible. The waters picked up the cars parked in her driveway, and it slammed them against her home. The impact pushed open her door, and water began rushing inside. I think I just put everything against it right here, tried to close it. The waters also carried a shed into her yard. Yeah, I don't know. That belongs somewhere up there. I don't even know who's it is. It's right. Her son-in-law is the Rowan County EMS director. He wasn't exempt from the flood damage either. He owns this car that was carried into this creek. It will. It really just uh, took these vehicles and uh, watered them up like paper against trees, against bridges. The creek is pretty calm right now, but if I was standing here yesterday afternoon, it'd be over my head. Folks say the water was 10 feet above the roadway. More than 60 homes were impacted by flooding in some way. Cleanup is on hold for her and others as they've dealt with power outages today. Parker is just happy she wasn't hurt. I'm glad I'm okay. That's, that's my thing. In Rowan County, Sam Smith, WKYT. There's a temporary shelter at the Carl D. Perkins Center in Moorhead. It will be open 24 hours a day for as long as there's a need.